Okay, so we're good to go? All right. So uh, basically, title of my talk, Cutting the Cord, basically my journey of sticking it to the man. So I am no expert on, you know, battling big cable or satellite TV, but there are some things I learned and some things I'm still learning. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I normally don't do technical talks. Last year I did a talk, uh, uh, NSA wiretaps are legal and other uh, annoying facts, uh, where I didn't talk about the morality of, of NSA or, or spying on our own citizens. I just talked about the legal aspect. Uh, I did a defense in depth talk a couple of years ago. It was entitled uh, Fist, Knives, Guns, uh, Defense in Depth. Um, I love guns. I'm known as the open carry guy in, in Kentucky. Uh, I open carried uh, at uh, DerbyCon, uh, as I do every year. And last year I open carried here, but I decided to keep people guessing this year. So I won't tell you if I'm carrying or not. I never do, unless I'm open carrying. Um, but I do have mine. Boom! And I will be shooting you. So if anybody checks their phone, I will be shooting you. Or at you. Uh, so I go by Fozzy. The only reason why I even have a handle is because the very first time I spoke at a, at a HackerCon, they said, get one or we'll give you one. So I hearkened back to my old Navy days. I was fat, hairy, and told bad jokes. So I'm Fozzy. So basically, what is it with my talk? I mean, the title doesn't really describe what I'm talking about. Well, basically, I'm going to tell you about my love affair, long-running love affair with cable companies and especially satellite TV. And um, I'm going to give you some replacement options that aren't as risque as, as normal. Uh, so a little bit about me, what makes me qualified. Well, number one, I'm a self-proclaimed uh, pajama-wearing hipster. I love nothing more than drinking hot cocoa in the dead of winter and talking about health care with my family. So that means I'm smarter than everyone. Um, I'm an information security analyst. I'm an average analyst on a good day. I'll tell you that up front. I'm a dad, which means at least two of the three people that are under the age of 18 think I'm a genius. I'm a husband, which means I'm always wrong. But since none of you are married to me, I'm right, because I'm on the podium. I'm a military retiree, which doesn't really play into my, my talk at all. It's just I'm proud of that. Uh, I'm Network Plus certified, which means I've at least read a book that says how to terminate a cable. I'm CISSP, which means I'm smarter than anyone else out here, unless you're CISSP, but I'm still smarter than you if your number is higher than mine. Um, and then I am a Bollard Security Certified Professional. And this one I'm truly proud of. I had to uh, donate $20 and took a self-administered test, uh, grade my own test because you have to have two-person accountability. And then uh, I got this uh, wonderful sticker in the mail that says, do you even know what a bollard is? I highly suggest that you become BSCP certified. Uh, he's not in here because we switched time slots. It's, it's 20 bucks to your favorite charity. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and if you go to the website, I'm actually the first certified person. Now, there's really only two of us. And the guy that started the organization, yeah, very selective. I mean, not every, my CISP number is like 500 billion, 413, 15 million. My BSCP number is one. Boom. But mostly, I'm a tightwad. And um, I was looking for a good definition of tightwad. And the only good one out there that played actually into my, my conversation here is from the Urban Dictionary. Yeah. So it's a person who is very uptight and unwilling to break a few rules now and then to have some fun or unwilling to allow others to uh, break the rules, similar to a party pooper, which really speaks volumes because my kids have a song for me, and it's every party has a pooper, our pooper is dead. So that's, whenever I read that, I was like, that rocks. And then the second part of it really explains me. It says, I'm such a tightwad, we don't even have cable, which is the purpose of my talk. So how did I get started on this long journey? Well, whenever I grew up, I grew up in southeast Texas, a little one-horse town called Beaumont. It means beautiful mountain in French, 
Highest elevation was about 25 feet. It was an overpass. <laughs> um, we had four channels, ABC, NBC, CBS, and then every once in a while we had this other channel that played Braves all the time, like Braves baseball. And uh, we weren't allowed to watch that because my dad was a Houston Astros fan. Uh, we started out with one of these huge aerial antennas that you used to always see back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, right? Uh, the problem is, is growing up on the coast in southeast Texas, we have a little bit of wind starting every September, a uh, hurricane season. And um, after like the second one, my dad said, screw that. We're going to indoor antennas, buy some aluminum foil. How many people out here remember aluminum foil on rabbit ears? Oh, it was wonderful. You could really tune those rabbit ears in, couldn't you? Uh, whenever I started going to high school, uh, all my friends started getting cable. I didn't get cable until spring of my senior year. Everyone else already had digital boxes. This is an actual picture of the box that we used with the little slider on top. It rocked. We had 24 channels. None of them were MTV. And if you're 18 years old in 1991 and not watching MTV, you're not popular. Plus, I was also short, fat, and annoying, so I really wasn't popular anyway. Yeah, yeah, and Harry, I've, I've split ends on my knuckles. I mean, come on. There is a God. He's a gag writer. Um, so at the age of 18, I had a brief stint uh, at Texas A&M, but very brief. Um, my funding was cut off after my first week. Uh, so I joined the Navy, did what every upstanding citizen would do, and I served my country. Had nothing to do with the fact that I actually didn't have a place to live anymore after my funding was cut off. So I traveled the world. I was in the Navy for 20 years. I retired from the Navy. I love my experience. My first 11 years were great. I saw all kinds of cultures, world cultures. It was wonderful. In Pensacola, Florida was my first duty station. The culture of Mediacom was great. Mediacom had 80 channels. It was free. It was in my barracks room. I never had to leave on the weekends. Wonderful. So then I moved up to Groton, Connecticut. Now for a kid from Southeast Texas who had never been further north than Dallas during the summer, Groton, Connecticut was eye-opening. First of all, there's this thing called snow. It's not whenever the TV goes off the air at night. It's actual cold, wet crap that doesn't actually uh, melt until April. So whenever you get there in November, it starts snowing. You don't know what to do. You come out of hibernation in April. But I, I wonderful culture up there. Um, Comcast Cable offered 120 channels. It was great. I never had to leave in those cold winter nights. From there, I went to Hawaii. If you've ever been to Hawaii, beautiful culture. Now, unfortunately, what started out nice with Oceanic Cable became very evil whenever Time Warner took over. This started my long feud with Time Warner Cable and the cultures of Hawaii. From there, I went to Maryland and got introduced to Verizon. At that point, I wished that I had Time Warner Cable, um, <laughs> but it just wasn't in the stars. Then there was this fateful day. Wasn't that just a package on one of the networks? What's that? Verizon? Oh, the stars. Yeah, actually, it was. You can, you can still get stars now. It's free if you sign a two-year contract. Yeah. Of which, the first year, you're going to pay that rate, and then every year after that, you, you know, it goes up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I got orders to England. So, the culture that is the British Isles was beautiful. And the reason I say that is in 1990, um, DirecTV started this small upstart company in California, and it really didn't spread east until later. At the same time in England, you had Sky TV. So it started almost the same month. The beauty about England is it's the size of Illinois. So whenever you have an upstart you know, in a, in a region the size of Illinois, you have coverage. It's not as expensive as having multiple satellites over, like, North America. So for, at that time, it, it amounted to $50. I got 200 channels 
a lot of them were sports channels. There's nothing better than not being able to sleep or coming off of a mid-watch, it being 2 o'clock in the morning and watching ping pong out of China or Taiwan. It, I mean, it's, it will blow your mind the culture that you'll experience sitting in your house or your barracks room in a foreign country. Um, so this is really where my, tr my true love affair of multi-channel TV started. It was cheap. It was quality. Uh, the programming was, was second to none. Uh, you, had, you had German stations uh, that, that, you know, had poorly dubbed English. You didn't have to watch German kung fu movies with that. Well, actually, they were kind of crappy. But um, anyway, Jean-Claude Van Damme movies in the UK from a German satellite were actually, they rocked. It was great. The, the voices almost matched up. It was pretty cool. So it, it really wasn't enough for me. I started getting homesick. So I, I acquired, uh, at the time, it was called Armed Forces Network. Now we don't want to piss anybody off, so it's called the American Forces Network because we don't want to give arms to our military. That's just stupid, right? It's not, it's not good to see Armed Forces Network. It's imperialistic. So this only offered eight channels. But there were, it was home entertainment. Uh, the cool thing was, you know, Friends was huge. So whenever I moved to the UK and they wouldn't show Friends, I would have to wait like three month delayed cycle where all of my friends in, in the US that watch Friends would send me like a, uh, uh, a letter with all these things burned onto CDs, right? And I'd put them on my computer and my wife and I would hover around the computer and watch Friends episodes and it was really nice. But the really, the key thing to this is uh, you had to buy your own receiver, which at that time was about $250, and then you had to buy your own dish, which was another $100, you had to install it yourself. So I'm afraid of heights. My house, the only clear vantage point to the Navstar uh, satellite that I needed was basically in the, on the peak of my roof. So I had my first come to Jesus experience whenever my wife said, he's safely on the house, I'm not gonna hold the ladder anymore, right about the time that I was coming down. And it really took me about 45 minutes to just get on the first rung from that point. That's whenever I realized I did submarine duty for a reason, it's because I'm afraid of heights. But I learned a lot. You learn a lot when you're sitting on the roof of your house with a compass trying to shoot a star, right? You learn a lot about math, engineering, uh, uh, signals. It's pretty cool. And this ended up, hopefully, will serve me in the future. So whenever I came back from the States, or from, from UK back to the States in 2005, uh, I signed up immediately with DirecTV. They were really the only game uh, in town. Uh, those, the, you know, that other, that other dish network thing that just sucked. Only poor people use that. I mean, I lived in Georgia, so everybody was really poor. But uh, it's kind of the same thing, 200 channels of entertainment. Whenever I first signed up, they gave me a free dish, a free DVR, TiVo DVR, uh, a second free tuner, and free installation. Whenever I say free, I mean I didn't have to rent it. They actually gave it to me. It was wonderful. So, and they, all that was only for $99 a month. So I had 200 channels, $99 a month. I was a little angry, right, because I, I was paying 59 in the UK, but whatever. Um, so here we go. Within three years, I went from paying, actually it was $69 a month, sorry, for 150 channels to over $169 a month. And then kind of came that seminal event whenever they started offering NFL Network or, or uh, uh, NFL Sunday ticket. And I was like, man, I'm a sports guy. I shall have this. And then the first bill came in, and my wife was pissed because it was over $200. Because if you know, if you have these premium stations like that that are a short time, you may pay for the whole season, but you pay in a short time. So literally, you're paying like, uh, I think at the time it was, uh, that a special, it was like $399. You had to pay over four months. So she was really pissed at me. Yeah. Uh, the next seminal event, and really what was a breaking point, was um, 
uh, I started getting really into uh, Hackers for Charity, HFC. I uh, really enjoyed the HFC model, you know, for uh, providing educational software to kids. My mother-in-law had, had been sponsoring, she'd been going on mission trips for over 10 years now to uh, a little village just outside Nairobi, Kenya. And my daughter, who, the first time my, my mother-in-law went was like two, and she was insisting that she go. She's like, this is what I want to do. I want to help these kids. This is what I want to do. And we're like, you're two. You're not going. Well, whenever she turned 14 or 13, we really couldn't stop her. She raised her own money. She uh, basically took all the information that I had from HFC and built her own uh, uh, Rachel Pye educational server. And she said, okay, now teach me about networking so that I can, you know, uh, these two computers I bought with the money that I fundraised, I can, I can link those to this server. And I was like, crap, I guess she is going. We're, we're, there's no stopping her. So they, she went to Kenya with my wife. She actually allowed my wife to go, which I thought was cool. Daddy was supposed to go. Apparently, Daddy just stays home. Um, I don't get to go cool places anymore. I get to go to Nashville, which is pretty cool, but it's not Kenya, right? Um, <laughs> not bitter. Checking that. Oh. Ah, Fail. Fail. Meet me at the range. No. Um. So anyway, uh, what they did whenever they got there, they, it was all you know good and well. But the problem is, there was no place to have class. They were actually having class and sleeping uh, in the living room of the house. So uh, my mother-in-law, my wife, my sister-in-law, my daughter built a school first. So this is actually the school. And that's the school finished. It's actually the nicest building in the area, which means we had to make it portable because once the, the guy that actually owned this and decided to lease the land uh, to the orphanage, once he saw this building, he wouldn't sign a long-term lease. And in order for the orphanage director to get her license, she had to sign a long-term lease. So we made it portable and just told the guy, look, it comes off in sections. She can take it with her. So they signed a long-term lease. Anyway, I digress. So, yeah, here comes my journey. So what I actually have done to date and then some of the things that I want to do in the future. So step one for me, uh, you know, my, my family is a family of cold turkey quitters, okay? My dad smoked for like 40 years. He bought a pack of chewing gum one day, and that was it. So I really felt the need to quit cable, or in this case, DirecTV, cold turkey. I do not recommend it. Holy crap, cut it back. Um, you, can, you can actually agree with them. What my wife ended up doing, because I became very irritable, was uh, I had to get off the couch. That make, made me irritated, right? I was, uh, that was my thing. I was on the couch. I had a big control. I was cool. Um, so she actually signed an agreement to suspend it for six months, and they will happily do that. Anything to keep your account open, they're happy to do. Because in six months, if you don't call them back, they start billing you again. All right? So don't do what I do and just say, they told me they'd remind me in six months. Forgetting that the email address I used, I don't check. So I started getting a bill in six months. That's whenever I really quit cold turkey. And I said, I can do it this time. I have family support. You know, my work supports me. I have guys out here that were all supporting me, right? Making fun of me on Twitter mostly, but that's all right. Uh, so the first thing I did was I found this website called antennaweb.org because I couldn't have zero channels, and I'm really not a technical guy. I, I call myself a hardware hacker, which means I love to break things and make them not do what I want them to do, but do something that they didn't originally do, and I just say, hey, success. So I decided I'll, I'll start easy. Found this website. It's really cool. On the home page of the website, there's a little start bar down there. It says click to start or button. You click that. You enter your zip code and your address, which, by the way, this is not mine. Nice. All right. Yes. <laughs> uh, like I said, cut and paste errors. I realized, hey, my original one had my address on there. Um, you say whether your antenna is going to be 30 feet above the ground uh, or not. And then you hit submit. And what it does is it will actually draw a picture, basically using Google Maps, and it will tell you what 
stations you can receive. Now, what you probably can't read up here says up to 19 channels from six over-the-air stations. Uh, if you re remember, you have something called, uh, I always get the terms incorrect, I'll call them what I call them. You basically have actual uh, physical broadcasts and then you have virtual broadcasts. And what that means is, say Fox, Fox actually, or not Fox, Fox is a bad example, they have one station. It's a physical broadcast, 56. Uh, CBS, 27.1. CBS broadcasts on 27.1, and they also have a second broadcast. They are responsible for carrying the CW channel in our area. So what it is is a lot of these, uh, PBS actually has four broadcasts in our area, even though it's one station, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then ION, and then we have another one, MeTV, that's carried by ABC. So the point is, is just because you see like the big four and then a couple of other ones here, uh, you don't really necessarily get to see what's, what's below that. So don't just say, oh, I'm only going to get five channels if you do this at home. You might get, in my case, 19. Uh, the other cool thing is they're color-coded. And what those color codes will do, this is where the industry kind of got it. So what they said was this, uh, this council got together and they said, we're going to mark, we're going to idiot-proof buying antennas. And they did a pretty good job of it. Basically, what you do is say the, the fox, the top one, it's yellow. You click on that yellow box, and it's going to show you a diagram of what type of antenna you need. In this case, a small multi-directional antenna. Multi-directional, or small multi-directionals you can pick up at Radio Shack for 20 bucks. I mean, they're really good, right? Um, and the bottom of the box, if your manufacturer complies with, I think it's called the ECA, uh, they will actually print this little pie chart on the bottom. So you can match up and say, uh, to get this one channel, I can get this small multi-directional antenna. It's going to be cheap. Uh, in the case of the red one, it's going to cost you a little bit more uh, just because uh, this is going to be a medium. That's the size, medium uh, directional antenna. So think multi-directional is a 360-degree you know, you pick up everything, directional is going to be more focused. So sometimes, depending on the antennas you get, if you have a directional antenna, you may not pick stations up that are, you know, 90 degrees uh, uh, out, of, out of sync with you. Uh, what I have discovered is you're pretty good at picking up 180 degrees out of sight. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, and then for the, for the purple or the violet, uh, you need a large directional antenna. Whenever they say large, think outdoor. This becomes a problem because I have a communist HOA that doesn't allow people to do what they want to do with their own property that they freaking bought themselves. Actually, I didn't buy it. The bank owns it, but I pay for it, right? Um, HOAs is another topic that I can speak on at another conference or out in the hall. We can collectively, as an HOA would, rebel against them. Um, oh, yeah, hacker like with machetes and axes. Um, don't get me started on the length or the height of your freaking grass, okay? Um, my HOA, they are communists. So step one was just kind of do some research, kind of get a feel for what I could get. Like I said, I quit cold turkey and I realized that wasn't going to work, so I needed something. I needed broadcast. Step two was build an antenna. Now, I don't know if you follow lifehacker.com. Do it. I mean, they do everything. Some, some of the stuff on there is nonsense, like you're peeling a banana wrong. You know, if I hit a freaking banana with a hammer and I like the end result, don't tell me I'm doing it wrong, right? But the cool thing is, is if you're cheap, like me, you can get a template to build your own HD antenna. Now, this is what I had. I used cardboard, actually my wife's foam board, which she was a little pissed off about because apparently it's like $10 a sheet. I didn't know that. Uh, aluminum foil. How much is the actual antenna versus the piece of foam? Yeah, the antenna that I wanted was like $180. Weingard, I, she couldn't see that I saved her money. I was like, hey, wait a minute, that's the words you use whenever you go shopping, so don't, let's not start this. Uh, aluminum foil, just standard old aluminum foil that I stole from the pantry. Uh, her hot glue gun. Two washers, two nuts, and something called a balin. 
Now, this is a Balin that you can buy over here. I bought four for $4.99, I think it was, and that was Amazon Prime, which I'll talk about later. Got free shipping, so cool. Next day, or two-day shipping. Rocked. Now, because I like to break things, I pulled that Balin apart. Uh, this is the one on the left. That's kind of the inner workings of it, and uh, I decided in the future I'm going to build those myself, and I don't recommend that. Uh, well, if you have my skills, I don't recommend it. So all that to say, my whenever my 14-year-old was in Kenya doing God's work, I was at home babysitting. Uh, well, I can't call it babysitting. My wife gets mad whenever I call it babysitting. Apparently, you don't babysit your own kids, but whatever. Um, so I was watching my kids, and I believe in slave labor at home, so I had them build this. And literally, a 7-year-old and a 10-year-old built my antenna. So, all right, so you can, too, using the template from Lifehacker, build your own antenna. I also have uh, another antenna that I want to build that I'm going to put in my attic. I'll show you pictures of that uh, a little bit later. So step three. Uh, once again, because I'm cheap, I said, you know, these 19 stations, actually 18, because one of them I kind of have to tune, uh, that's good, but I want more. Yes? Right. So how well does that work? What? Oh, okay, yeah, so good point. How well did this work? This antenna beats the $60 antenna I bought from WineGuard. So this is a rock star antenna. It cost me like $12, only because I used, what's that? It's on Lifehacker. Uh, whenever you go to Lifehacker, you actually search for HD antenna. There's going to be like a little, a little article that says, hey, this website has been uh, shut down or lost its... Uh, um, yeah, lost the, the page no longer exists, but we have it here. And it actually takes you to archive.net, which is or org, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's a template. You literally draw it out with a magic marker and cut it out with scissors and glue it on there. You're done. You have to tune the angle of the uh, the, the angle there. Uh, you have to tune that a little bit, but it's not really. It's not like it's hard. You just kind of open it up a little bit, and stations go away, and you close it, and they come back, and you're good. Glue. Good question. <clears throat> so I got to looking around, and I was like, you know what? I paid for this PS3. I've only ever played games on it uh, and used the Blu-ray player. In my opinion, PS3 is still the best Blu-ray player on the market. Uh, that's probably because I'm too cheap to buy one. My wife bought one, which was the second line. It was one of those smart, smart Blu-ray players. The Blu-ray actually broke after about three months, uh, but it does have the Amazon Prime app loaded. Because my wife loves to shop, and we're already Amazon Prime members, and I'm, I'll say I'm a student because I have a .edu email address, uh, I get Amazon Prime for forty nine dollars. Used to be thirty nine dollars. Now it's forty nine. Oh, Prime Video Red Bar. Yeah. Price. Yeah. Well, yeah. Regular price now is what ninety nine bucks. It used to be eighty nine. So yeah, I'm, I'll always be a student somewhere, just so I can keep Amazon Prime. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. So PS three uh, has the Amazon Prime app on it. There's other apps that you could use. We'll talk about those a little bit. Um, once again, I'm just kind of going with what I. I did. Uh, so I had Amazon Prime. Um, I was, we're recording, right? Yeah, okay. So theory, you know, you're not supposed to use other people's accounts, so I will never tell you to do that. But there are other services out there, say Hulu, and they have student accounts, um, and, and uh, Netflix, right? Um, so don't use other people's logins, public service announcement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not that they track multiple IP addresses, because I, I don't think they do. Uh, let's see. Media centers. So I started doing some research into media centers, and I decided there's really two schools of thought. There's the hardware media centers, uh, like Boxy or Roku, and then there's software. There's a lot of software uh, versions out there. I kind of narrowed it down to Plex and XBMC. I was going to do like a side-by-side -side with them. I ended up just going with XBMC because... The guy at work used XBMC. My neighbor used XBMC. So getting it up and running was a little, little difficult, but uh, I had technical assistance 24-7, so it was okay. 
So there is what Boxy looks like. Um, I've, I've played with Boxy a little bit. It can be pricey. They're still charging like $230 for Boxy. Um, as a pretty good, what? Are they cheaper? Oh, okay. Oh, they stopped producing this model? Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, it, the freaking man, right, that runs cable or runs satellite TV also buys up things that, for the people, right, and then they screw us. So, boxy. Next one. Boop. Uh, let's see, Roku. So, what's that? You got two Rokus? Yeah, Rokus are really good. Um, the, the entry price for these is around 99 bucks, which I'm a miser, so I'm like, no, not paying $99. Uh, right about that same time frame, Glenn Beck went from TV to uh, online only, so I convinced my mother-in-law, because she's a huge Glenn Beck fan, uh, to buy a Roku so that I could play around with it, right? Uh, really in, easy to install, uh, quality TV. She has one app, the Glenn Beck app. But it's uh, basically like anything else. You can buy apps. Uh, HBO will probably be offering Roku. Uh, they just came out, what, last week, two weeks ago, and said, we don't need cable, which I love because we don't need cable, right? They're going to start providing their own streaming. Yeah. So. Oh, they do. They have a channel on Roku already. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, currently, you have to be a subscriber with a cable company to get HBO on the go, right? They're going to peel that away from companies. They're still going to sell it. They're also going to offer it. They were talking like price point of 5 or $10 uh, a month. Hey, you can't beat that, right? Um, so, yeah. CBS, I heard, is going to do the same thing. Yeah, so CBS is going to have a, like a preferred subscriber station, basically. Um, so that's really cool. And, there, and from what I understand, CBS is going to start offering content, kind of like the Netflix model and Hulu. They're going to start offering content specifically for their online sales. So, so that way they can kind of drive up that business. So, yeah, this is, this is something I've been watching the last couple of weeks, especially since my brother doesn't have Netflix anymore. Not that you can share accounts because that is completely illegal, brother-in-law. Um, let's see. Okay, so next was uh, Plex. So I kind of discovered the first two. I liked Roku, but there were some things about it that I just, it was too expensive for me to experiment with and break, right? My wife would have been pissed. So there's a Plex channel on Roku. There's on Roku. Yeah, there's like popcorn. Uh, there, there's all these different channels. Um, and basically, because it's, it's, Pretty much open source, people will pick it up, play with it, modify it, port it, and put it on another device, right? Uh, I did not go with Plex. Uh, once again, so Plex runs on uh, uh, OS X, Windows, FreeBSD, Linux. So, I mean, it's pretty, pretty robust. It, it, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to install. Uh, the first time you do it, there's some little kludginess to it, but it, it's new. Well, once you get familiar with the product, then it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, once again, I went with XBMC. <clears throat> so XBMC is wonderful. Uh, the purpose of XBMC started out as Xbox Media Center. It was so that you could take your media and play it through your Xbox, right? You could catalog it, save it, rip it, do all those things. It's your media. Well, now, or not now, but quickly they started having these things called add-ons. Think of them as like plugins. So somebody comes up with this uh, software to do this, and they provide their station, and you add it on. So um, uh, this runs XBMC. It's no longer called Xbox Media Center. It's just now XBMC. And it's about to change names to Kodi, K-O-D-I. Uh, they want to kind of distance themselves from XBM, or X, uh, Xbox because they haven't been on Xbox for a while or been exclusive to Xbox for a while. Uh, they have builds for Windows, Linux, OS X, iOS, Android, uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, there's a couple of more. Like they have special builds for if you're going to play on Raspberry Pis, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, just go to xbmc.org, and you will, <laughs> and you'll be able to download that from there. I'm taking notes. Yeah. Okay. Xbmc.org. So I ran with this for a little while. It's a little kludgy installing these add-ons. You gotta hit the bulletin boards and websites and determine which are the best ones. Things like One Channel and uh, Ice Films. And, you know, people talk about them. Uh, sports Devil. Um, not that I'm a sports fanatic, or would use those. Because, by the way, XBMC is completely legal, but if you start stealing cable, that's illegal. So keep that in mind. Everything that I'm really talking about here is, is you know, I've never really tested it fully. Um, <laughs> one day, completely theoretical. What's that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is what the bulletin boards are saying. Yeah. Uh, one day, I'm scrolling through, and I see something called XBMC Hub, and they have this product called Wizard. It is a special build that basically goes out and takes those top 20 to 25 to 30. Each time they do a new uh, build, it's a little bit different, uh, add-ons, and they automatically uh, put them on the XBMC server, and they'll do, uh, they'll do the updates for you, so you don't have to go out and manually do updates. It's really nice. And uh, it actually puts, like, their top four right there on the bottom line with big buttons, like an easy button. So it's really, really nice. So the wizard, I, you know, I hear it's great. I can't really tell you firsthand how, how wonderful it is. Um, yeah. So step five, uh, step five was uh, build an XBMC server. So I was running XBMC on my company laptop, and you know just for uh, you know experimentation. And my boss said something about we work in security, and you're putting this software on your laptop. So I had to take it off, right? All right. So building an XBMC server uh, with the project uh, my daughter uh, went to Kenya for, uh, she purchased a Raspberry Pi, and I purchased a Raspberry Pi just to play with. It kind of sat in my drawer for a while. Well, if you remember, I said that XBMC has a perfect build for Raspberry Pi. You literally flash the SD card, plug it in. You may have to set an IP address. I went wireless for a little while and, and then wired uh, because of the, uh, the remote that I chose. But uh, this is my, once again, I have kids for a reason. They're slave labor. Um, if you're going to eat in the house, you're going to work for the, for the family, right? So this is my, my now 14-year-old actually building it. What's that? Uh, I'm the man, yes. But I will never let my daughter present by herself. Um, yeah. You'll rue the day. That's what she keeps telling me. It's like, someday you're going to need your diaper changed and you're screwed. And I'm like, stop saying that word. Mom will get pissed. Um, so, yeah, no, screwed. So, XBMC, uh, she was nice enough since she took my really well-made, expensive acrylic uh, XBMC case to Kenya. She built me this one out of Legos, which I thought was pretty cool. And what you don't see here is the lid. The lid is actually a Raspberry Pi that just sits on top. Or, I'm sorry, a Raspberry, the little symbol for Raspberry Pi. It's pretty cool. Um, so just to kind of recap, I experimented a little bit with over the air. I invested in Amazon Prime, or actually my wife did, and then I built an XBMC server. Uh, because I plugged it in directly to my router, I was able to use um, a remote control function for XBMC uh, on my Android and installed it on my wife's iPhone. It's really nice. Yes, sir. Not really. Not really. So is it possible to view uh, Amazon Prime through XBMC on my mobile device, uh, not on phones? You can do that with iPads, but you really wouldn't want to because it has its own build. So I would do it that way. Oh, yeah. Can you stream it through the Pi to a TV set? Absolutely. The way that I had it set up currently is it can only be one TV set. Now, I'm going to start experimenting with the uh, Chrome, uh, the uh, Chromecast. Chromecast, thank you, uh, and try doing that. So it's a little kludgy. I still haven't. I suck at programming. I suck at anything with the NIX at the end. 
my daughter's pretty good at it now, so because I made her do everything command line. And um, so now we are experimenting, right? Yeah. So kind of what's next? I want to get a little bit more professional with it. Oh, by the way, that sending two of my family members to Kenya, the really the defining moment is whenever my wife came back, now I'm going to send five. We're all going in June, one week in Uganda for HFC, and then one week in Kenya. So I'm really, I was a tightwad before. I'm really short on my budget, right? Um, yeah. So the getting professional with it may occur after next June. And what I plan on doing is I want to... Uh, I want to have a dedicated, which, what they call HTPC, a uh, home theater PC. And the benefit of this is you can get an t- uh, internal uh, TV tuner card, and you can also use the PVR function, the personal video recorder function. Um, it's a little bit easier than running it from a Raspberry Pi. You can do it from a Raspberry Pi, the PVR part, but I, I haven't had a lot of success in recording. It, it just The Raspberry Pi uh, Model B can't handle it very well. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get a new antenna. Now, I found this antenna online, and it actually has the, um, the, the schematics, if you will, of this antenna. Uh, it's literally like six easy steps. Uh, it's like, uh, what, four or three, three coat hangers. Uh, two by four is what I used. I've actually built one. It wasn't exactly like this. Um, some washers, some screws, and a balin. Uh, I need. I want to put it in my attic, and uh, I'm gonna go from there just to see if it, it if it will actually get better reception. Because, so like I said, there's one station right now. I have to kind of turn that uh, that my current HD antenna. So I'm gonna put it up in the attic, and this will allow me to feed multiple TVs. Right now, I have one antenna for each TV. I have a complete distribution center in my house, but I'm not using it. So I want to use it. And screw the HOA. Uh, so next is free to air. Yes. Uh, can I switch between the two antennas? Oh yeah, no, I absolutely could. Yeah. Ooh, good point. Like an AB switch. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, f- okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is something I want to experiment with. My experience with the Armed Forces Network, um, throwing up a satellite dish, playing with a tuner, making that work, is something I really want to play with. You can get free-to-air satellite systems for about $250 for the easy kit, is what they call it. That gives you a dish, a 60-centimeter dish, I think it is. Uh, By the way, your direct TV dishes don't work with most free-to-air receivers and your dish network ones don't. They're oblong shape, and they have a different L and B element. Uh, If you don't know about satellites, so the signal comes down, it hits the dish, and it bounces back up in the L and B, and then that gets sent down to the receiver. Um, It's because of the the way their dish is shaped and the size of the dish, it doesn't really work with free to air. Uh, Let's see what else. Approximately, I checked last night, there's 289 channels, 150 of them are English. So that's really good. Uh, They have Al Jazeera in both English and Arabic, if you want, you know, Al Jazeera. Um, And like I said, you you have to install your own dish and your own receiver. DirecTV left their dish, so I'm just going to remove that. I'm thinking about making like a a Wi-Fi extender or capture device, if you will, um, out of that, and then just putting the new dish up there. Uh, Let's see. And then other tightwad notes. So there's an application called Viggle. Viggle was a direct marketing attempt, or direct marketing. It was a direct marketing campaign that uses an app, and it services direct TV. Uh, you get like 200,000 points for signing up, which is two-thirds of the way to a... Uh, a um, Apple TV device. So 300,000 points, you can buy an Apple TV device. Well, not buy it, you get it for free. Um, but I've been using this for a little over a year, even though I'm not a member of DirecTV. Anybody can sign up. And I've already, that's how I bought my Airport Extreme. It was free. Uh, I actually fitted out my man cave uh, for free. 
because you can get Lowe's and Home Depot cards from them, uh, $25 and $50 cards. And then last year I took my wife to dinner that cost me nothing uh, at this nice little restaurant in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, but anyway, so Viggle, look it up. Uh, you can only get a certain number of points per day, but they just started this new thing where if you guess the scores of professional and college football games, you can get like 6,500 points per game. So you can go over their 2,000 points a day cap by like literally like 50,000 points. I suck at it, but there's other like little trivia games you can play too. Uh, I just learned about this. I was mentioning out outside the Bing search. Who, who was it that brought up Bing search? Yeah, your wife does a lot of Bing searches, right? Yeah. You, can, you can get points just by s signing up uh, through Bing, uh, an account, and just search for things. There's a cap. There's a cap. It's like 60 points a day, you said? Uh, 30 points. 30 a day. points? Okay. It kind of goes on, logs on. Yeah. Searches on words, clicks on images, kids in a bunch, gets done, the day is moving on. Yeah. So Hulu and Amazon gift cards just for searching with Bing. It takes less than five minutes a day, ten minutes a day. I hear a Selenium script What's that? getting written. Yeah, Is that the yeah. sound of a Selenium script getting typed in the back of the room? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So somebody like me that sucks at this stuff, I would be, you know, freaking every day. There's got to be a better way. And, you know, the guy in the next cubicle over is probably going to script it. But um, And then the other thing, don't buy anything from the big box stores or Best Buy or even Amazon. Go to Craigslist first. You'd be surprised how many people get pissed off at technology every day and just put it on Craigslist. And they'll say things like, come get this piece of crap out of my driveway and you can have it for free. That's how I'm getting my dish for free to air. So I'm not paying that $250. It's too much. So that's basically it. I'm getting the, the gag or the, the, the pull from the stage. So... Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be outside. If you have any ideas or thoughts, or if you've been doing this for two years like some people in the audience have, uh, I would like more information because I don't pay anybody. Uh, I refuse to. Doing this for six months has saved me enough money, and of course through trickle-down effect, that I've almost been able to pay for one of my peeps to go to Kenya, uh, airfare. So... All right, 10 months, sorry, 10 months. So there's no questions because I won't take any. I'm on LinkedIn. I'll accept everybody on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'll accept nobody on Facebook because that's actually my friends, and I've got like 10 of them, so that's all. What are you um, and to then say? Twitter, what's that? What are you trying to say? I'm not I your friend. Don't even worry about Facebook. No, I have a lot of really good acquaintances. And why'd you put it up there? I only have 10. Uh, basically because I'm a jerk, and it's my stage. So um, Twitter. Everybody on Twitter. If you're too annoying, which sometimes I want to mute myself, but apparently you can't do that. That should be a function of Twitter. Um, you know, like drunk texting, they should have a self-mute button. Yeah, I know. Drunk tumbling. <laughs> drunk tumbling? Really? I thought that was just being drunk. Um, anyway, I'm Fozzy Hacks. That's F-0-Z-Z-I-E-H-A-K-Z, Fozzy Hacks. I will, I will tell you, I'm an unashamed Christian, so sometimes I've visited Southern Seminary, which I've been accepted to. I start in January. I went to a preview day, and I had like 52 texts or tweets from Southern just saying, look at this rock, look at this tree. Wow, this is cool. I can't believe they accepted me. This is the first visit from a hacker. Everybody's like, you're a hacker? How did he get in? You know, I had people from admissions coming up to me going, don't say that. And I was like, let's talk. So I literally had a side breakout session with admissions, and they're all like, oh, you guys are pretty cool. You're not you like anonymous. Satan? What's that? You worship Satan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you. I would like to shoot more people, but I can't get it to work because I'm not technical.